What is up, YouTube? And welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! House. Guys, today I'm bringing you the best deck of the format. Yes, you heard me right. Brandon has dodged another ban list, and people are going to start to realize that that's a huge mistake on Konami's part. Our day one subscribers know just how far this deck has come. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button because you won't want to miss the next update. All right, jumping right in, the dedicated normal summon of the deck, Aluber the Jester of Despia. Searching for any brand dispeller trap adds some insane consistency to the deck and adds a lot of explosiveness when you hard open branded fusion. And do not discount this card's floating effect that helps lock down on field effects. A single copy of Despian Tragedy is all that's necessary for post ban list branded, which searches for any Despia monster if banished or sent to the graveyard by card effect. But more importantly, and to be honest, the only reason the card is still viable to the strategy is its recycling effect, which pairs very well with cards like Saranir or the main deck Albion. Rounding off our Despia monsters, a single copy of Ad Libitum of Despia, this big time contributor is easily accessed with cards like Tragedy, the brand new Finale Dragon, or even Branded Opening. If used as fusion material, it can special summon out your Despia or fusion monsters from the graveyard or banish zone, and has the game ending effect on field to boost all monsters attack stats by their level times 100. Two copies of the Fallen of Albaz, the backbone of the deck. While I wouldn't go as far as to call Albaz a brick, I do believe it's suboptimal to actually open the card, so there's no reason to include a playset. Especially since you risk the conflicting normal summon of a Luber, Kit, or even Cartesia. Just one copy of Albion the Shrouded Dragon. Albion can help you dig a little deeper in the deck while also setting up your grave with cards like Retribution and Regained. And don't forget that this card is treated like Fallen of Albaz while on the field and in the graveyard, which will come up in those more awkward hands this deck might throw at you. Branded's in archetype hand trap, Tri Brigade McCurrier. You'll definitely want to run two copies of this card, seeing as you'll be using one for fusion material, and searching for the second to reinforce the oppressive boards this deck puts up. Negating monster effects or searching for key Albaz support monsters, either way, Merc does a lot of heavy lifting for this deck. Miss Polly on legs, Blazing Cartesia the Virtuous. This is your go-to target if you're able to search for a monster that mentions Fallen of Albaz, being able to special summon herself from hand, coupled with the effect of fusing while on field, makes for a snowball of advantage. Not to mention the effect to add herself back to your hand during the end phase really bolsters your grind game. Wrapping up our Albaz support monsters, Spring End's kit is, in my opinion, an essential component in the consistency factor of this deck. Even at its worst, kit is an amazing normal summon, but at its best, it's a key extender after you've gotten the ball rolling with your fusion plays. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge the ban list, the clear 100% winner, three copies of Branded Fusion. This is hands down one of the most broken fusion spells ever printed, and it's the reason the format is starting to favor Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. But this deck is not the same deck that was terrorizing pre-Power of the Elements. This is an entirely different beast. Branded Fusion has a dizzying array of combo potential and demands a lot of attention during your matchups. It's always best to force as much interruption as you can before you activate this card. Another card likely to make its way onto the semi-limited or limited list, three copies of Branded Opening. This card gives you access to cards like a Luber, which will then get you into Branded Fusion. So it's easy to see why Branded Opening is one of the best starters in your deck. And it's always important to keep in mind that Branded Opening protects your fusion monsters from being destroyed by banishing itself from Grave instead. A starter and protection wrapped into a quick play spell is just way too good. Now getting into the toolbox spells that Branded always has access to, a single copy of Branded in white. I'll be showing you guys exactly how white is used in the combo at the end of the video, so make sure to stay for that. Branded in red can be searched, but it's likely you'll end up setting the card off Albion's end phase effect. With the Ishizu Shufflers limited to one each, this card can safely make its way back into the format, and putting up cards like Guardian Chimera during your opponent's turn makes for some solid interruption. 
Branded Retribution is not only a killer counter trap on field that negates any effect that includes special summoning, it's also huge for the grind game, shuffling back fusion monsters from the grave that mention Albaz. It also has an application in the graveyard, adding back any speller trap except itself from grave, making plays out of virtually nothing with cards like Albion the Shrouded Dragon. I wanted to go over the continuous spells and traps on their own because they have an extra layer of interaction built in within the deck, so you gotta keep watching. Branded Loss works much like Magical Meltdown, and by that, I mean the continuous effect is applied that the activation of your effects to fuse can't be negated. Keep in mind, when a fusion monster is summoned under Branded Lost and its effect goes off on summoned as Chain Link 1, the rest of your chain cannot even be responded to. Meaning, you can search from a courier before you pass priority back to your opponent for them to Nibiru. And cards like Ghost Bell or Apoloza, which negate the activation, become irrelevant. It's very important that you keep these sort of interaction points in mind going into a format where hand traps are going to start to make a resurgence. It's hard to explain Branded Regained without Branded Beast, since I wouldn't see a reason why you wouldn't want to couple them together. What Regained lacks, Beast makes up for, and vice versa. If your opponent normal or special summons a monster, Regained will trigger to special summon a targeted Bystrel from Grave, which in turn sets up Branded Beast which allows you to pop a card during the main phase, giving you control a Bystrel and tribute a dragon as cost. Any card that can handle floodgates and fun cards like Baguska is an easy main deck in my book. And that's just the effects that have synergy. Regained helps recycle light and dark monsters that are banished, putting them onto the bottom of the deck and drawing a card. Beast also has an effect to help the grind game placing continuous spells from the graveyard face up during the end phase. Ironically enough, the worst bystrel to splash in any deck is the best one to play in the branded deck, so I'm maxing out on 3 copies of bystrel Saranir. We've all grown sick of its first effect, to banish a light or dark monster from either graveyard and special summon itself, but its second effect is what makes this card truly vital to the strategy. Whether it's dumping retribution for grave plays, opening for protection, or continuous spells for follow-up, Saranir has quickly become a staple. And rounding off our engine cards, three copies of Baisho Lubelian. Now, before you get discouraged, I want you to keep in mind that I run 30 engine slots, meaning there's definitely wiggle room for you to play even a single copy of Baisho Lubelian. But what I will say about maxing out on the card it is a fantastic starter and easily one of the best cards in the deck. Being able to swap out Saranir on field to get its effect, then back it up with a continuous spell or trap, place face up directly from the deck, makes for a much higher ceiling on your end boards. I have 10 flex spots that might start to see change according to the format, but one card I'm very confident in is three copies of Nibiru the Primal Being. Kashtira has been tearing up a lot of post-Photon Hypernova tournaments all over the TCG, and it's safe to say, at the very least, the deck will be a tier 1 contender, and has very little issues winning a round once they win the die roll. So, it's very important to main deck blowout cards like Nibiru, since you're never guaranteed going first, and conceding the first game puts your back against the wall in game 3. 3 copies of Fusion Deployment to help play around Ash Blossom on Joyous Spring, or even acting as a board breaker going second since you'll have access to Albaz. But more often than not, this card is grabbing Cartesia directly from the deck. I can always admit when I'm wrong, and I love to spread as much information as I can through a lot of playtesting, online play, and even in-person play. And to everyone, I was definitely wrong about not considering a playset of Allure of Darkness. Regained plus Allure is some of the most insane interactions I've ever seen, ending in a draw 3 plus a search if you manage to banish a card like Mercurier or Tragedy. And since your opponent is likely holding the Ash Blossom for Branded Fusion, you can start to snowball so much advantage that the Ash can easily be played around. Call me a madman all you want, 
but rounding off a clean 40 card deck, a single copy of the bad man himself, Dark Magician. The only reason Dragoon wasn't good last format was because both of its effects involved destroying, and in a tier dominant meta, that wasn't very optimal. But post banlist, Dragoon is a very dangerous card which top tier decks like Kashtira and Runic just simply cannot deal with. And since you're using the Dark Magician as fusion material, you'll be able to control the field, constantly destroying monsters and burning your opponent. Photon Hypernova came with some amazing branded support, and the brand new Albas Fusion definitely lives up to the hype. Rindbrum the Striking Dragon can negate when an extra deck monster activates its effect, then you can return a monster on the field to the hand. This is an immediate answer to a Rice Heart, since its effect is mandatory, but isn't the only way Branded can decimate Kashtira. Brygrand the Glory Dragon and Alba Lenares the Abyss Dragon are usually my go-to fusions when you're using cards like Mirror Jade or the Finale Dragon. Brygrand can grab Mercurier during the end phase for the negate, and Alba Lenares can add fusion deployment and Branded fusion during the end phase. A single copy of Lubelian the Searing Dragon you're able to not only shuffle itself back into the extra deck if you're fusing, you're also able to shuffle it back with Retribution. Not to mention, it's the easiest way to get into Dragoon. You definitely want to play two copies of Albi and the Branded Dragon. You want the ability to actually make this card with Branded Fusion to have easy access to the Bishop Luellian. And one of my favorite interactions is using its effect to put up Rindbrum, banishing Mercurier in the process. The only extra deck rip you actually have a reason to fear is on Mirror Jade the Ice Blade Dragon. You don't always summon the second one, but cards like Diablosis allow for Kashtira to rip apart your extra deck before you even start playing. And of course, Konami had to make a card like Unicorn that can also rip your extra deck after you've activated an effect or if it attacks. Masquerade the Blazing Dragon has the Floodgate effect to tack on 600 life points as cost to all of your opponent's effects, and that's all I'm going to say about Masquerade because I don't want to risk bringing any problems to the channel and the guys at Yu-Gi-Oh! House. One copy each of Despian Queridus and Despian Preskinian, since they're the Finale Dragon's best targets to cheat out of the extra deck. Queridus makes it very hard for your opponent to run over your fusion monsters, and Proskinian helps close out games having a crushing burn effect during battle, and to top it off, he can banish or snatch any extra deck monster from your opponent's grave. Grand Guino, the finale dragon, is another fantastic boss monster from this new wave of support from Photon Hypernova. On summon, it sends any level 6 or higher light or dark monster from your extra deck or main deck. This gives you easy access to cards like Baixo Lobelian or follow up through the Albas fusions with Graveyard and Phase Effects. It's also a fantastic end board piece, seeing as you can react after your opponent's special summons via monster effect, cheating out more Despia fusions to pile on more disruption. Protoplan Dragostopelia is one of the best generic fusions that Branded has access to since you'll always have a plethora of fusions in Grave and in the Banish Zone. Of course, a monster negate is incredibly powerful, but the level modulation is the real unsung hero making Xyz plays that much harder to achieve. Only time will tell if Red Eyes Dark Dragoon is truly a game ending card this format, and this will of course be heavily dictated by the success of Kashtira. Dragoon can't be targeted which makes it a win con against decks like Runic and Kash, and its Omni Negate provides a substantial amount of protection from popular blowout cards that people have decided to play against the cash deck, like Book of Lunar Eclipse and Evenly Matched. Since I've decided to play the DM, Dragoon's on-field effect to destroy a monster and burn your opponent is opened up as a very solid option to slow down any sort of tempo your opponent is attempting to maintain. And the final card in the extra deck, a single copy of Guardian Chimera. Being able to pop and draw is huge this format now that Tier Limit is going to be taking a back seat. 
I also want to point out that you might be tempted to fuse this card via Cartesia, but Guardian Chimera must be fused via spell card or effect to gain its disruption. Before I start to break down the side deck, keep in mind the format is relatively young so make sure to adjust it accordingly. Moving on. 3 copies of Dimensional Barrier, one of the most insane going first lingering floodgates the game has ever seen and will likely take the spot of scythe as a way to lock your opponent out of the extra deck even if it's only for a single mechanic. Three copies of anti-spell fragrance to blow out runic variants and anybody citing a heavy amount of normal spells like lightning storm and dark ruler. Now some help going second. Three copies of Lightning Storm to counter anyone trying to floodgate you to death while still being versatile in the fact that it can also deal with attack position monsters. Three copies of Book of Eclipse for the Cash Tira matchup. The Book of Moon retrain is the easiest way to deal with the cash board, booking the Arise Heart to get your grave back, and flipping Shangri La to gain access to your zones. Do keep in mind this card can be ashed, but that also means Branded Fusion is sure to resolve. Last, but certainly not least, 3 copies of Evenly Match. I've always been a very strong advocate for this card, and this format is no different. Evenly deals with a plethora of matchups, all at the cost of your battle phase. Alright everyone, it's combo time. Alright everybody, jumping right into the combo, I have our two best starters of the deck in Baisho Lubelian and Luber with three copies of Nibiru just to kind of proxy an opening hand, not that they will have anything to do with the combo, let's go ahead and get started. We can go ahead and pitch the Baisho Lubelian, sending it as cost to search for a copy of the Baisho Saranir. Then we can go ahead and normal summon the Aluber the Jester of Despia. His effect will trigger on his normal summon and we will be able to search for a copy of Branded Fusion. We will go ahead and straight away activate our copy of Branded Fusion. Sending a copy of Tri Brigade Mercury and a copy of, of course, the Fallen of Albaz. This will make our brand new fusion monster, Rindbrum. Now that that effect has resolved, we can go ahead and activate our Baisho Serenir, targeting the Tribrigade McCourier in the graveyard. We'll banish it to special, and on the resolution, Tribrigade McCourier will trigger because it was banished. And we can search for a copy of... Where are you at? Blazing Cartesia, the Virtuous. Here, we can then activate... Or, excuse me, this is not an activated effect. This is actually a summoning condition. So we will sack Saranir for the Baisho Lubelian, and that will trigger Saranir's effect in Graveyard. We can go ahead and send a copy of Retribution, which will come in later. Now we can go ahead and activate the Baisho Lubelian's effect, placing face up in the spell and trap zone any continuous branded spell or trap. And I like to place Branded Lost. Here we can go ahead and activate Blazing Cartesia's effect in hand. She will special summon herself. Then we can go ahead and activate her effect, fusing herself and the Aluber, the Jester of Despia, for the brand new Finale Dragon. His effect will go off as chain link one, branded loss will go off as chain link two, and we get to search for a copy of Albion the Shrouded Dragon. And then Finale Dragon will be able to dump a copy of Albion the Branded Dragon directly from the extra deck. 
Here, we can go ahead and activate Albion the Shroud of Dragons effect in hand, pay our cost, sending a copy of Branded in white. Then we will put Albion the Shroud of Dragon back on the bottom of the deck to draw a card. Now, I will show you guys the draw. There's the draw, it does not matter whatsoever what you draw. It is simply just to show you guys the combo. Pushing past here, we can go ahead and banish Retribution as cost, targeting the branded in white, attempting to add it back to hand. Then we can go ahead and activate branded in white, banishing from our graveyard, a Fallen of Albaz, and a Dark Monster. Two Fusion Summon, a copy of Lubellion the Searing Dragon. Its effect will go off on Chain Link 1. We'll go ahead and pay our cost, discarding one of those cards we opened up with to shuffle back and fuse, and we will go ahead and do so, shuffling back from the Banish Zone, a Fallen of Albaz, and Lubellion itself. For Mirror Jade, the Ice Blade Dragon. Of course, Fallen of Albaz gets shuffled in. Here, we are safe to move into our end phase, where two separate things will trigger. I like to activate Albion the Branded Dragon first. Setting a copy of Branded in Red. Since we have that Aluber, waiting in graveyard and on a separate chain still during the end phase Cartesia's effect will go off attempting to add itself back to hand then we end with four cards in hand two being one we opened with a draw and blazing Cartesia who gets added back from the graveyard and all the disruption we have on field is insane not only were we able to set a branded in red, sorry about the clear there. Not only were we allowed to set a branded in red with Albion, with something engraved to target with, to potentially put up Guardian Chimera, Masquerade, on and on, etc., etc. Grand Guignol can also put up on its own when your opponent special summons a monster via monster effect, you can cheat out either Quiritus or Preskinian. Rinbrum is in a gate when a monster from the extra deck special summons its effect, then you can bounce Mirror Jade. You can go ahead and activate its effect during your turn. I do think that play is just a bit cheeky and you can get punished really hard for trying to overextend like that. But again, it works. So you put, potentially could send something like Brygrand during the end phase or even Alba Lanatis for even more searchability. This deck is absolutely insane. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for checking back in with Yu-Gi-Oh! House. Make sure to stay tuned for all the premier Yu-Gi-Oh! content coming at you guys all year long. Don't forget to comment down below and let me know your thoughts on the deck and where Branded will end up this format. And if you guys have made it this far, man, you might as well smash that sub button. Alright guys, peace.